Hey guys, Majo up here, and welcome to our ninth video in our 2D Java game programming series. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to add in fonts. What? So, we have our FPS rendering in our console, and I don't want that to, to do that anymore. That's useless. I want it to render on screen. So, what we need is we need an actual font in order to render it onto screen. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our GFX. I'm going to consider it a GFX. We're going to make a new class. And this new class is going to be called Font. Perfect. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a public, not caps lock, a public font, right? A constructor. And we're going to add in a string. And this is going to be a path. And that's all we're going to really need. We're going to need to know where to download our font. And our font is going to be actually an image. It's going to be based off an image. And it's going to work in a very interesting manner. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a private image, font image, I'm going to call it. We're going to have a private int array. And we'll call it offsets. And a private int array widths. Now, the thing that's interesting about fonts that makes them interesting is that fonts aren't exactly perfect squares. You've ever you notice that when you type a word, right, a W, an I is smaller than a W, right? They take up less space. Now, we could have it so that all of our letters take up the same space, and that makes our font a lot easier to do, but it doesn't look as good, and it gives you less control over the font. So we're actually going to have individual widths for our images that will allow us to make an I very small and a W very big or as big as we want it to be. Okay, so that's what our offsets and our widths are for. And I'm actually going, but we'll initialize actually here in the font. So we're going to take font image and we're going to say font image equals new image and we're going to load it in from our path as expected. And I'm going to say offsets is equal to new int array and for this specifically, I'm going to load in 58. Now, why am I loading in 58? Well, we're only going to be using 58 Unicodes. So, if you look at a Unicode chart, I'm just going to Unicode chart. Pull that up. Unicode table. This, uh, my image that I have drawn only starts it starts at space and space is 32 in a decimal code so it's 32 and mine ends at uh i think z right i only go to z yep correct i only go to z in my drawing so we're going from 0 to uh 32 to 90 which 32 to 90 is 58 so we only need 58 now, you could make a lowercase. We're not doing lowercase. Uh, it's very simple, and it's very you'll, it's, you'll be able to tell how to do it. I've also seen before where I've also made a video about this, and some guy made a program that generates the image for you without having to draw it, and it generates all the way from zero uh, to, I think it generates till tilde, right? 126 which is useful, and it, it automatically drew it. It was pretty cool and all. That is also an option for you. I like drawing it myself, because when you're drawing images that are very small like this, only a couple pixels, having a con complete control over what it draws is nice. Also, you can add in, so right here is an at symbol. <laughs> I put a smiley face instead of at. I think, you know, why not? So you can do the same thing. So like if your game had like a special currency, you could change it, the font to make it that special currency. Simple. Now, let's implement this. So as you can tell, our font is very interesting. And the way the font actually works is we're going to have a for loop that'll loop through the top line. And this top line is completely just data, right? So a blue marks the beginning of a character and the yellow marks the end. And we use that to determine the width and where to read. So the blue is our offset and blue to yellow is the width. That's what those arrays are for. Okay. Actually, this is going to end up being, I think, 59. It uh, usually goes one more. So I'm going to put... 
I uh, will put 58 for now because it should be 58, but it might say index out of bound, uh, array out of bounds, which is 59. I don't know. Sometimes it does it. So let's do a for loop and int i because we only need to loop through our top, and we're going to loop through our font image dot get width. So we're going to loop across the top of our image. That is the goal. Now I need to have a int Unicode because that's uh, I'm just going to call it in Unicode because that's what I want to call it. I'm going to call it zero. Well, I'm going to initialize it to zero. I'm going to call it Unicode. I'm going to set it to zero. And we're going to make a for loop. And our for loop is if uh, font image dot get p. What? Dot get. Oh, wait. Why am I making a for loop? If font image dot get p. Right? at our i is equal to and i want my blue color so the way oops, the way i can get my blue color is if i click on it this is the hexadecimal for it so it's i want to so i can copy that and go back into here and do this but uh java needs more than that so you need to put 0x to tell java hey this is unicode and we also want to put ff because ff is the alpha value of it and it's going to be a pick so we want our blue. If, okay, so if we find a blue, right? I'm going to say offsets uh, Unicode is equal to I. So we hit our first point, right? And that's all we need for that. Now, if our font image that get P I is equal to our yellow color, which my yellow color is. Uh, the a complete inverse of it, so zero x f f and then paste. Then I want to say offsets Unicode. No, we're not going to do offset. We're going to set our width. Our width for Unicode is equal to i minus offsets Unicode. So we're going to take our, our width as our our current location in the image minus the beginning of our character that'll give us the width and then once we do that i'm going to say unicode plus plus we're going to add one to our unicode and that is all the code we need to load in our font i'm going to make a source getters and setters for all of these uh, we don't really need setters but it's fine and there we go we got we got our font now we actually need to draw it let's go to our renderer and we're going to I'm going to put it up sort of near the top because I like putting it up near the top. Make a public void draw string. Yeah, let's say draw text. I'll call it draw text. So I'm going to take in the string text. I'm going to take in an int x off x and int off y and an int color. We're going to actually determine what color our text will be. So we can have multiple colors. Now, we need a font though. We didn't tell it a font, and we could pass in a font every time we want to draw in text, and that would be annoying. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to actually do is we're going to store a, a font, right? I'm, gonna call, I'm just going to call it font. Oh boy, but now we have a problem. So we need to initialize this font to a font when we first start our image, our image, our game container. So what I'm going to actually do is go to font, and inside a font, the very top, we want to make a public static uh, final font, and I'm going to call it standard. This is the standard font that'll load in at the very beginning, and we can change it later in the code if we want. We can change the font, but I'm going to load it to a new font. I'm going to say new font, and I'm going to say uh, not slash. I'm going to call it font.png. I actually just call it standard.png because that's what I call my image here. I call it standard. I actually need to export this. This is in the wrong work spot. Back up a little bit. Uh, new folder 2. And I'm going to put it into my res folder. Now, Actually what I can do though, I'm going to refresh this. I'm going to start organizing this a little bit. I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it fonts. And then I'm going to put standard into fonts. So now we refresh. 
we now have it inside the fonts folder. So here, for when we're loading it, we need to type fonts slash because it's in the fonts folder. Okay, so now we have our standard and our renderer. We're going to say font equals new font. Uh, not new font, new equals font dot standard. So when we initialize, our font will be set to standard. So we're going to draw our text now. Now the first thing we want to do is my sheet does not have uppercase. I mean lowercase. So everything needs to be uppercase. If yours does have lowercase, you don't need to do this. But I'm going to say text equals text dot to that to uppercase okay. uppercase if I can type boom so that just made everything uppercase don't worry I will have my image in the description for download so if you don't want to draw it because it takes quite a while to draw it but anyways so we got our text now we need to loop through our text so I'm going to say int i equals zero i is less than text.length i plus plus boom now i need to know what my unicode is right we gotta know what our text what character we're going to draw and so that's going to be text that uh, code at point at index which will be i now we have a problem here zero in my font is space but zero in unicode is a weird is null it means null. So you got all of these end of transmission, inquiry, all these data um, characters that are only used for data. You don't actually use these for typing. Like here's new line, vertical form feed. There's a bunch of carriage return, shift in, group separator. There's a bunch of, there's escape. There's a bunch of crap we don't need. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually subtract 32. To, from this code to make space be zero. Simple like that. All right, so now we have our actual Unicode. Now we just gotta draw it. So we're gonna set the for loop. And actually, before we do that, we're gonna need one more actual uh, thing and I'm gonna put up here at the top and it's called int uh, offset. So as we're typing out our, our characters, we don't want to draw them on top of each other, so we have to offset them by the width of the previous character. So, so we're going to make a for loop. It's going to call int y equals zero, y is less than our, uh, our font that get font image that get width. And I, actually, to save me on get, doing a bunch of get fonts, I'm going to say um, image image. Uh, font image equals font dot get font image and we're just going to store it real quick so we don't have to we can skip a getter font image dot get height I plus plus actually that might be the only instance that we oh, we'll need it to draw it but and then we're going to do a font int x equals zero x is less than um now this is where our width comes into play. So font dot get font dot get width, and we're gonna put in parentheses our Unicode. So we want our Unicode location, and then we'll add on to it. We might not actually need this. Uh, it adds a line of code that we don't really need. So I'm just gonna do that and get rid of that. Okay. So. We have our for loop, but we want to, we don't just want to draw the image. I mean, we could, but we don't want to do that. I want to actually use my color. So how do we do that? We need to put in a statement. So if font dot get uh, image dot get p, and we'll say x plus y times font dot get uh, image dot get width. Okay, maybe we do need that, but whatever. If it is equal to our if it's equal to white, and white in Unicode is FF, 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 all Fs, or negative one in decimal, but we're doing FF, 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 because I like that better. So we have our white. So if it's equal to white, because in my image, our texts are white. So if it's white, we're, that's a character. We're going to draw it. Otherwise, don't draw it. Okay? Now, this will not actually get our our point because this is going from zero to our width 
but we need to take into consideration in our x the offset. So we're going to add uh, off, uh, font dot get offset and in, in our brackets our Unicode the offsets for this specific character. Boom. Now we need to draw it. So I'm going to say set pixel, right? X, Y, and now we need our color. So boom. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add on our offset in our original offset, and we're going to add on offset X and add on offset Y. And there we go. And after our for loop, I'm going to say offset plus equals font that get width no, offset that get width and our Unicode. So we're going to add on the width of the character we just drew to our offset, which will make uh, put our offset at the proper location for our next uh, character. This looks like it's gonna work <laughs> so let's give it a go so what I'm gonna do is actually go to game container and this is where our FPS comes in handy so we're gonna get rid of that and when we draw after we render our game I'm gonna say renderer dot draw text and we'll say FPS and then we we'll say plus FPS so we, in our text we're gonna have it nice and we're gonna put in this top left corner and we're gonna make the color uh, cyan. FF, FF, zero, no, no, FF, FF, zero, zero, FF, FF. Is that cyan? I think that's cyan. And then we're going to draw it. Oh, oh, we got a problem. Index array out of bound. Yeah, it is 59. Boom. And then we run it again. And boom. Look at that. We have text in our engine. What? That's crazy. And it works perfectly fine. Great, great, great. Uh, now, there's there's a couple uh, additional things we can do to this to make it nice, such as uh, centering it. So, uh, this video is getting kind of long, and I'll probably leave that for a later video where we do some more optimizations and upgrades. Because with this, so like, if you wanted to draw the text at the center of your offset X and offset Y, You'd have to find the total width of your string, and then you'd set your offset to half of that width, and negative half of that width, and then therefore it would draw it in the center. So things like that make it a little bit more handy to use. So things we might do in the future. Okay, and things you can do on your own if you uh, have that knowledge and uh, can think of how you would do that. So yeah, I think we're gonna leave this video here. It's getting quite long. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks for watching.